hello everybody, this is uh, Brother Shane Oasis, and uh, tonight we're going to be doing a recap on uh, what I preached Sunday night. I've got some more scripture to go with it. It's about sacrifice. You know, I brought it up the other night, uh, you know, this whole Christian wall is about sacrifice. You know, we, we sacrifice our time when we come to church, and we uh, sacrifice our money when we pay tithes and give to the Lord, and uh, we sacrifice our time when we pray, you know, when we could be out doing other things, and we just make so many sacrifices, you know. Uh, that's what the whole Bible's about. You know, it's about sacrifice from the front all the way to the back. But uh, tonight I'm going to be in Hebrews uh, chapter 10, and we're going to uh, talk some more about it, and then we'll go from there. It says, uh, For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscious of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. You know, I was talking about the other night in uh, 1 Kings chapter 8 and 2 Samuel 6, how uh, Solomon made great sacrifices and David made sacrifices. When David then was trying to get the ark uh, to where it needed to go from uh, the house of Obedium back to where he wanted to take it, the city of David or Jerusalem, wherever, uh, it said they went six paces and they would sacrifice. Six more paces, sacrifice. Six more paces, sacrifice. Uh, he was so scared of the Lord because uh, Uzziah done died uh, because he had touched the ark uh, without uh, uh, putting his hand on the stave the way that, uh, the priest was supposed to carry the ark with a stave. Your hand was supposed to be on the stave and not just you know touch the ark anyway. And Uzziah done died, so David was scared of the Lord, so they was making all these sacrifices. Six paces, sacrifice. Six paces, sacrifice. And, uh, you know, and finally they got it back where it needed to go. And then I, I was... Uh, uh, going back over to Solomon when, when he was dedicating the temple, when uh, you know, because David always wanted to build a house for the Lord, but the Lord wouldn't let David because he was a man of war and he shed a lot of blood, so he allowed uh, Solomon in his stead to build the house. But when they got the temple built, got the house built, it said Solomon offered all these sacrifices. And I, I really got to thinking about it today because I quoted it. It was 120,000 sheep and it was uh, 20,000 oxen. Uh, plus two, but I got thinking about it, you know, and, and I've been to uh, I've been to UTC Arena down there to a lot of concerts, and in UTC Arena, if you put everybody in the seats all the way from the bottom of the floor to the top balcony, it had, had equivalent of holding twelve thousand people back in the day, unless they made the McKenzie Arena a little bigger. Thompson Bowling Arena, a little different, it would hold a uh, equivalent of forty thousand people. And it's huge. I mean, it's just a huge arena, you know, like put two or three UTC down in it. So <clears throat> I got to thinking about it today, and I thought, you know, Lord, if you took a hundred, if you took one hundred twenty thousand sheep and you strapped each sheep in a seat in an arena, it would take uh, it would take uh, ten UTC arenas of sheep being strapped in each seat uh, to provide this sacrifice. If it was at Thompson Bowling Arena, it would take two arenas and a half. Uh, or three uh, three arenas uh, at Thompson Bowling Arena, strapping a, a sheep in every seat, and it's just astronomical. I mean, because when you get in the arena and you look around, it is so huge, and people, uh, it, it's just mass crowd, you know. So you got to, I, I got this God in my mind today. How many sheep that He sacrificed to the Lord, and then behind that, twenty thousand oxen. I'm thinking, where did all the blood go? I mean, uh, the priest was cutting these throats, you know, where did all that blood? I mean, it had to be blood up to their knees, you know, or more. But anyway, he offered this great sacrifice, and, and it said the, the, the Lord came into the house and filled the, the temple in such a way that no, the priest couldn't even get up to minister. You know, they couldn't do anything uh, because the Lord uh, received their sacrifice. That's what I say this whole Bible is about. It's about sacrifice. But uh, in our said, but in these sacrifices were made it uh, uh, again, and it said, for it's not possible blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. But but wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, sacrifice an offering that wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me, and burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin thou 
thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written to me to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, sacrifice an offering and burnt offering and offering for sin, thou wouldest not. Neither had us pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He take away the first. He take away the sheep and the goats and the oxen and the cattle and the pigeon doves and the turtle doves. And, and he takes away that. He take away the first that he may establish the second by the which will, will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes in some sacrifices which can never take away sins. You know, back then it only covered their sin. It only covered their conscience. It never did, you know, remove the scars in, take away sin but this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever sat down on the right hand of god now we get to thinking about all the gallons and gallons and gallons of blood that had been spilled through all the animal sacrifices through the old testament and they say the human body holds a uh, uh, seven pints of blood if i ain't mistaken uh could hold a little more of that seven quarts or whatever seven pints but when jesus sacrificed himself on the cross you know, uh, he he, dread, he bled every drop of blood because when they run that sword in, in his side right here, it said blood and water, whatever blood, whatever blood he had left, uh, whatever blood he didn't bleed at the whipping post, and whatever blood you know he didn't bleed when they put the the, the spikes through his uh, wrist and, and put the crown of thorns on his head and the spikes through his feet and all that blood that he lost. But uh, whenever they run the sword in his side, it said blood and water, whatever he had left in his body, come gushing out all over one of the Roman soldiers. So he gave every drop of blood. You know, just like these animals, when they cut their throats back then, they would pretty much bleed completely out. So uh, Jesus comes and he gives himself once and once for all as a, as a, as a sacrifice. Anyway, he so said, this man, once he offered one sacrifice for sins, the sins for the entirety of the world, for, watch this, 1,000 generations. I want you to think about that. Sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. The word sanctified means to be set apart. He said, Wherefore the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and their minds I will write them, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Now for remission there is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he had consecrated for us through the veil, that is to, uh, that is to say his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled, from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith and without wavering, for he is faithful that has promised. So you know these scriptures I quoted here at the beginning is all about uh, sacrifice. And just like I said, if we go all the way back through the Bible, uh, uh, when God tells Abraham, when God gets ready to test Abraham, he tells Abraham, he said, Abraham, take your son, your only son, take him up here on Mount Moriah and offer him to me for a uh, sacrifice. You know, and uh, Abraham obeys God and, you know, he gathers up the wood and gathers up, you know, his, uh, his donkey or his, his camel or whatever he, he, he told him to do, his oxen or whatever. He loads it up. He loads the boy, the lad up, the boy up, and they go up the mountain to make this sacrifice. <clears throat> He's going to make this sacrifice, you know, up the mountain. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, he gets up there and the Bible said there's a, a, a ram caught in the thicket when he gets up on top of the mountain. You know, he straps his son down. He puts the wood, puts the fire. He's getting ready to draw the knife back and kill his son. And, uh, you know, his son's even looking around. Daddy, you know, you've got the fire, you've got the wood and everything. I see everything, but where's the, where's the sacrifice? He had no idea that he was the sacrifice. But anyway, God stops him. The sacrifice is there. See, when Abraham started up that mountain, every step that he took up that mountain, there was a ram coming up the other side of the mountain that he couldn't even see. And while he was walking with by faith, you know, it pleased God. So God sent this 
uh, other uh, ram up, up the other side of the mountain. And by the time he got to the top of the mountain, got ready to draw night, it was caught in the thicket, you know. And uh, uh, he said, Abraham, do your son no harm, you know. I've, uh, I've got you a sacrifice right here. And he grabs that and he makes sacrifice. You know, uh, all through the Bible it's about sacrifice. When we look in the book of uh, Job, uh, when Job got up every morning, he made a sacrifice, not for himself, because the Bible said he was the uh, most righteous man in the land of us. He was in right standing with God. And he didn't make a sacrifice for him and his wife, but he said, where can I get me a sacrifice for my, my kids because they're down there drinking wine and taking the Lord's name in vain and I've got to make me a, a sacrifice somewhere. I've got to get me a He didn't think about breakfast. He didn't think about uh, getting a cup of coffee or getting something to eat. He said, I've got to go out here and find me a sacrifice. I've got to make a sacrifice. That, that was all on his mind. I've got to make me a sacrifice every morning so that my kids can be covered down there and not die. And so he would get up every morning and do everything that he could in that day, trying to live the best he could for God, making a sacrifice. So we see that, you know, sacrifice is all through the Bible. And uh, so in order to be pleasing to the Lord, we have to, you know, give our life as a as a living sacrifice. You know, I was talking about that in, uh, in, in up there the other night, you know, how uh, we give ourselves as a living sacrifice uh, to the Lord. Uh, which is our reasonable service and uh, not be conformed to uh, this world, you know. And uh, when we do, you know, uh, you know, God can uh, use us. Now in uh, Hebrews uh, 9, uh, 28, it said, So uh, Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. You know they've got this teaching out there that that Jesus that uh, that that he committed suicide on the cross. He pretty much there's a teaching out there that said that you know he committed suicide on the cross and he went to hell and uh, all that you know. And, but if you read the Bible correctly, he did not commit a suicide. He did not commit spiritual suicide. The Bible said that he gave himself as a sacrifice. You know, it goes all the way back to uh, John three sixteen said, "For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only begotten Son." Gave, uh, you know, and that's what it means. It means to uh, to sacrifice. It means to take somebody else's place. You know, in uh, in Hebrews uh, uh, nine nine, it said, "Which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices." and could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. You know, the sacrifice of God, when we receive the, the cross, of what Jesus done for us on the cross, when we receive that, it forgives our sin, but it also it, it cleanses our, our, our conscience, you know. And uh, there ain't nothing better than going to, to bed with a clean conscience, you know, a guilt-free conscience. There ain't more people out here taking their lives today because of a, of a guilty conscience you know, of, of shame in their life. But the blood of Jesus was so powerful, and his sacrifice on the cross was so powerful that it can cleanse your conscience, it can, it can cleanse your heart, it can cleanse your mind, it, it can uh, you know, cleanse all sin. You know, it can purge you from all sin. Now, uh, 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 if we go on down here, it said, uh, Christ being come as a high priest of good things to come, a greater, more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands to say that, of the building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, by his own blood, on his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats, or sheep, or rams, and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctify, purify the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, uh, who through the eternal spirit offered himself a, a sacrifice without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works, to serve the living God. Amen. You know, the word sacrifice, it means to take somebody else's place. That's what it means. And you know, and uh, Jesus came and took our place on the cross of Calvary and uh, he stood between what we deserve and he let all the consequences of sin hit him. He let all the consequences of, uh, you know, of uh, anxiety, shame and guilt. He let all that hit him, you know, and stood in the gap and made up the hedge and made that sacrifice for us. And see, that ought, to be a, that ought to be enough for us, you know, to want to come to church and, you know, and to serve him and to give our life 
uh, freely back to him. The Bible said that we're bought with a price and that we don't own our own selves. You know, God gives us a, a body. Uh, we don't own nothing. God gives us a body uh, to live in. You know, he created our soul. Our soul lives in our body. And we're just tabernacling down here, you know. And uh, so that's why we need to give our time to him because he, get, he we can't outgive God. And if we give our time to him, he gives that time back to us. And uh, so, uh, you know, I won't, I, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to let you know that he sacrificed his life for you and took all the consequences of sin up on himself for you so that you could go free, you know, and uh, live this life for him and, and have freedom. Oasis of Shane, if I uh, don't have a home church, I invite you to come up here. Oasis Ministries, uh, where God is doing great and mighty things. God bless you. We will see you next week.